guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to get some good descriptive statistics for a numerical variable very quickly using R. So first off, as always, we need some data. So let me call on a data set that lives inside your basic installation of R called cars. So we don't have to spend too much time knowing what cars is. Cars is a data frame and we can quickly look at the variables available. Speed and distance. So let's just focus on speed and here we see it's a numerical variable. We have 50 observations and there's two variables, these are the two. We're going to focus on speed. Here's a preview of the first few speeds. So if I just look at cars, dollar sign speed, the convention is the name of the data frame, dollar sign, the name of the variable. Okay. If I look at this, I'll get all 50 speeds. So these were speeds of cars. We don't need to focus too much. Now I want to learn a little bit about this data. I want to explore it a little. I want to describe it a little. I want to summarize it a little. So I can look at a histogram. This is a vi we, we did that already. That's a visual aid. That's very useful but maybe we want to also summarize a little with some numerical summaries. So let's start with the basics. Let's get the mean. So that's mean speed, okay, 15.4. We can also get the trimmed mean with a simple argument called trim. Okay, we could trim a certain percentage, a certain fraction from zero to 50% of the observations from each end. So what that does is that protects against like outliers and extreme values. So let's say we trim 5%. So that would chop off a few from the high end and a few from the low end. Okay, 5% exactly. Okay. Now uh, just so happens, by the way, that car uh, speed is uh, looks like it's sorted. Okay. Don't expect that uh, by default for any variables. You can see distance here. Dist was not sorted. So it just so happened to be like that. Okay, if I wanted to sort, I could sort like this. Okay, so cars, dollar sign speed, and I could look at all the sorted. Just so happens that it was already, so, looked like it was already sorted. Okay, um, what else? So back to what we were doing. We're looking at the mean. Let's look at the median. So the median, member is the value that splits the data into two equal parts, so 15. Okay, that's another measure of central tendency. Uh, what about some uh, quartiles? So we can look at uh, summary. This is another useful function. This gives us a lot of information in one shot. So we get the minimum, the, ma uh, the maximum, the median, we, and the mean. So those are things we already got separately. But we also, in addition, we get the first quartile and the third quartile. Okay, so Q1 and Q3, by the way, median was Q2, right? Another name for Q2. There is a function called 5num, which is the 5-number summary, and it gives us the same information, except it's less descriptive, as you can see, and it leaves out the mean. Okay, so it gives you min, max, Q1, 2, and 3. Okay, uh, have your choice. Uh, then there's also a quantile. And quantile will give us the same information, except it lets us ask for something more specific. So you see we get the minimum, maximum, Q1, Q3. So it will let us get any percentile. So in this, as a second argument, I can say, give me the 50th percentile, which is equivalent to the first quartile. And no surprise, we get the same value as the median. right? But I could also say, give me the 95th. So this would be the number. This would be the value such that 95% of other speeds are going to be less than this, and only 5% are going to be more than this. So that's we could do that for any arbitrary um, percentile between uh, 0 and 1, OK? 0% and 100%. So I can get the 75th percentile, and that should correspond with my third quartile, right, by definition. OK, great. So um, also, I can get the interquartile range. And we already can see what that's going to be, because I have the values for Q1 and Q3. So I get 7. So be careful here, because the way that these quartiles are calculated sometimes is different. There's at least eight ways that different software packages 
um, get these core tiles, especially Q1 and Q3, there is sometimes going to be slightly different values here. So the way maybe you learn it in class, it might give you a slightly different value for these guys and as a result for IQR because what's IQR? Q3 minus Q1, right? Okay, so be warned. Okay, so interquartile range was 19 minus 12, 7. Okay, that gives you the range of the middle 50% of the data. Uh, what else have we talked about? Uh, let's get the range. So we get the range of this variable b uh, 4 to 25 no surprise the summary got us that so a lot of redundancy here uh, we can get the minimum maximum separately let me just quickly show you that if you ever need that separately okay um, now let's move on I think to measures of variability we already talked about IQR I guess and range those are measures of variability let's uh, do variance so variance so this will give us the sample variance a lot easier than sorry var for variance right okay and we can get the standard deviation directly let's do that and we know that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance so let's just check that sqrt is the function for square root hug the parentheses and you see we get the same value whether we do it directly like this or slightly indirectly like this okay okay i think we covered a, a wide range of numerical summaries for numerical variables all the way from measures of central tendency mean median and variant, uh, variability, measures of variability with the variance standard deviation, IQR, and so forth, and many different functions for you to play with, combine, and so on and so forth. Okay, once again, the data set uh, that we work with was a data frame that lives inside of R. If you want to take a look at all the data frames that are available to you in the basic installation of R, just type data with an open and close in print open close parentheses and you'll see a list of all the data sets. If you scroll up and down here, you're gonna find the one we used. So these are data sets for you to play with, learn, and some of them are very interesting. You can also import your data from outside of R, which is important, of course. And you can also create data within R, which is things like we did for educational purposes in previous videos when I needed a variable to, to show you something. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful. I'm trying to keep these short and sweet and to the point. So let me end here. Be sure to continue watching the rest of these videos in the Introduction to Applied Statistics with R series. Have a great day. Subscribe.